Okay, if you will, turn to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. We talked about gratitude last week. We're going to talk about gratitude again this week. And so I, I think it's a good subject. And don't fuss about my subject. Be grateful for my subject. <laughs> so... Uh, this is the one subject that if you fuss about it, it's for you. Gee, not again. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Not again, because we talked about it last week. So gratitude, a life of gratitude. And that's the way our lives ought to be. I remember uh, one of the episodes of Andy Griffin. Uh, remember the one where uh, Goober is in the station and some rags catch on fire and he sort of passes out and Andy runs in and saves his life. And so all of a sudden, now old Gomer, not Goober, but Gomer has just got to do everything in the world for Andy. I mean, he's everywhere Andy is, he's there. And he sort of has an overreaction to appreciation. And so he he brings them fresh fish for breakfast. He washes his car. He repairs his car. He pledges to fix the fence and trim the hedges, to sweep the garage. And literally, he carries Opie to school one day. And he said, this is the firstborn of the man that saved my life. <laughs> And after a while, Andy sort of got tired of it, didn't he? Yeah. And then Andy faked something so that Gomer would save him. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up, Andy saves Gomer trying to save him. <laughs> and it was a fake. And then he had to do it again and finally uh, got the payback. <laughs> and so that's not what I'm talking about when it comes <laughs> to gratitude. Okay, that's that's a little overdoing and... and uh, but, but what is gratitude? Is gratitude some kind of frantic payback uh, where we're just trying to pay God back for all that he's done or pay somebody else back for all they're, he's, they're done, they've done for us? Or is it no big deal to God? Whether we're thankful or not before, for the things he does to us, because really, that's just his nature anyway. Mm -hmm. So, should we get all worked up with this thing of gratitude? People will say things like, I do something for somebody, and they're like, oh, I'm just so thankful for that. I, I, and I normally will say this, don't worry about it, it's just my nature. It is my nature to help people. It is my nature to do those kind of things. Uh, but the thing is, is they want to show their gratitude. There's nothing wrong with that for people to show their gratitude. Uh, we, we should do kind things for people because that's our nature. Uh, it is God's nature to bless us as his children. That is God's nature to do that. And, uh, but the thing is, is a, a key to gratitude is it's God's gift to enrich our lives. When God's doing things for us, it's God's gift to enrich our lives and to enhance our relationship with Him. Our gratitude to God for the things He does for us, even though it's His nature, when we show gratitude for what He does, enhances our relationship with Him. Does that make sense? And the same thing is true. If, if your wife cooks for you a great meal, one of your favorite meals, if you show gratitude for what she just did, does that enhance the relationship? Yes. If the husband does something great around the house, and boy, he just goes overboard with taking the trash out. Okay? And the thing is, is... You want to enhance the, the gratitude is, is when Brother Lee takes the trash out, he comes back in and say, boy, I tell you what, 
There ain't another man in the world can take trash out like you do. I could just stand there, watch you take trash out, see those muscles flex. I mean, you are a man that can take out the trash. You are the man. And all of a sudden, that's going to enhance the, the thing. And next day he goes to take out trash. He says, hey, honey, come on, watch me. I'm going to take the trash out again. <laughs> so the thing is, it enhances the relationship. And the thing is, is you want to do it again. If you show gratitude, you, you if, if you go and cook his favorite meal and he had to show gratitude for it, you're not going to be excited about cooking his favorite meal again, are you? But the thing is, if he shows gratitude and shows that he's real thankful that, you're going to do it again. This next time, you're going to be even more excited about it because you knew he was so grateful for doing it, for you doing it last time. I wonder if God does something. I wonder if maybe sometimes we don't see God's blessings in our life as much. It's because we're not thankful for the things he does for us now. Mm -hmm. So he's like, well, why should I do any more? Hey, I'm not thankful for what I do now. So why, why do any? And uh, there's somebody in my life that's close to me. But they never say thank you for the things you do. And I've done, I did a lot of things for them. And there's some things that needs to be finished. I haven't finished them yet. I haven't been thankful for the things I've done so far. Now, I didn't do it for that reason. But when I hear them griping about what I did because I didn't finish it, doesn't make me want to go back and finish it. You know, you ain't even thank me for what I have done. And the thing is, is you sort of get like, why should I? You live with it the way it is right now. It works. I'll get over there when I get a chance. I got other things to do. I got Andy Griffith watch. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is uh, uh, gratitude goes a long ways with relationships, with uh, how we act. Uh, and here's the thing is, is God does the things he does to enhance our lives to build our relationship with him because of this reason. God is for us. Can I say that if nobody else is for you, God is. God is for your good. He wants the best for you. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 tells us that. That he's never thought a bad thought about you. His thoughts have always been good thoughts to an expected end. He wants you to have a great end. He wants things to be great. And the objective that God is in it just for his own glory rather than for ours is false. God is not just doing everything he does for you just so that you will glorify him. He's doing it because he's for you. But the fact is, his glory is always for our good. And the thing is, both are comparable together. They're compatible together. His glory, our good. They both go hand in hand. He wants good so that this will glorify him. And so there's a lot of things about gratitude that I think sometimes we don't even look at. Uh, gratitude is God's will for us. Um, if you want to, you can turn over and, and read with me in Psalm chapter 103 may take me a minute as I am trying to break in this new Bible. This will be the first time I've used it to preach out of. So Psalms 103 and verse number 1 says this, Bless the Lord, O my soul. I, I like this. If you read it this way, it makes it feel better. Okay, I'm going to read it like the old southern preacher would read it, if that's okay with you. It says, Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Oh, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy sins, iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, 
who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like eagles. Now, that might make it sound better. No, that, that just gives the emphasis a little more. Y'all want me to preach like that? I can. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, that's the way it ought to be in our life. What a blessed Lord. We, 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 we ought to understand all that God's done for us. Romans tells us that they were not thankful, and so they became. Can I tell you, when you're not thankful, thankful you become something. Okay? You become ungrateful. You come to the place that the imaginations of your heart will be wicked continually. Is that not what it says over in the book of Romans? Chapter number one, if you were to read through that. He says, and when they, they were not thankful, and they became, they became some things. You know what one of the things they became? Reprobate and mind. You know what else they became? Homosexuals. Can I tell you, it didn't say that they were already homosexuals. They became that. Okay? Nobody's ever born that way. Okay? I know that's not in the message, but I'm going to be thankful for straight people. Because that's the way it is. It's the only way God ever made the people were straight. Straight out of the womb. When you come straight out of the womb, you're either a man or a woman. You're a boy or a girl. And when you come out of that womb, boys are already geared like girls. And when you come out of that womb, girls are already geared like boys. And if anybody tells you anything different, then they're idiots. <laughs> That's it. We'll just put it that way. They're messed up in the head, and the Bible says they're not of him. Okay? And so I'll just say that. I'm, that's we get off that. Okay? Uh, so... Israel, were not, they were not thankful, were they? They were ingrates. They were in the wilderness. God was feeding them. And they complained complaining about the food. So God says, okay, I'll give you some meat. They complained about that. I guess they wanted it filleted when it came down. They didn't want to have to work for it. Uh, the thing of ingratitude and not being grateful leads to a whole a multitude of sins. I said this last week, and, and I really believe it, that gratitude is probably the very first root of sin. Very first root of sin. If we were thankful for God, we wouldn't need idols, would we? Mm -hmm. If you are thankful for your spouse, you're not going to have an affair. If you're thankful for your job, you're going to work hard. If you're thankful for the car that you've got, you're going to take care of it. If you're thankful for the house you've got, you're going to take care of it. If you're thankful for the body that God's given you, you're going to take care of it. Does that not make sense? So if I'm thankful for the body God's given me, then I'm, I'm not going to smoke, and I'm not going to drink, and I'm not going to take drugs. Maybe I'm not thankful because I do take Twinkies. I do. Okay? Uh, and, and that's a drug, too. Okay? Sugar is a drug. Uh, and, and so sometimes I think we're not thankful. And so I don't want to get on to people and say, okay, your sin says you're not thankful, but my, my, I, I'm the same way. If I was thankful for what all I have, then I would not maybe be the way I am, would I? Maybe I'm not thankful for the clothes I have, so I keep getting bigger, so I have to buy new ones. Okay? And if I was thankful for the clothes I have, then I would stay the same size and stay in them. Right? Okay? So I preach myself as much as I preach anybody else, but the thing is, gratitude is one of the greatest things that we as Christians need, and if we are grateful people, it will keep us from sinning like we do. What was the biggest problem with Eve in the garden? She wasn't happy with what she had. 
So she wasn't thankful for all the hundreds of trees she could eat from, was she? She wasn't thankful for the situation which she was in. And so the devil made her come to the place to look at the other tree that God told her not to eat of. And then she took it. Wasn't thankful for that. You see, I believe that every sin comes from being ungrateful. I think it's the very first step. Is being dissatisfied and ungrateful. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 16. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, I want to give you three characteristics of a life of gratitude. Three characteristics. And I think the first one we find there in verse number 16 where it says rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Now, I want to sort of step down to verse 18 in one sense because we need to look at something where it says in everything give thanks. It doesn't say for everything. In everything. You say, what do you mean? Well, here, here's, here's what I want you to understand. There's a difference of being in something. You mentioned it today. You got in it on, in your uh, Sunday school lesson. You didn't say in to, but in. And there's a difference in the way you say this. In everything give thanks. They say for everything, but in everything. Now, what's that mean? I can be thankful in everything, even when I'm not thankful for everything. Habakkuk, chapter number 3. I'll read it for you. Verse 17 through 19 says, Although the fig tree should not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. It's a pretty bad situation, isn't it? Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places to the chief singers of my stringed instruments. Now, here, here's what he's saying. Okay? I, everything might not be going good. We, we know the verse. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. There's something we miss. It's those first few words. And we know. In order for this to be this way, you got to know something. And the problem with most people is they don't know anything. That's the biggest problem. If, if you know that God is in charge, if you know that God is for you, if you know that every thought of God is for your good and for your best, if you know that God is sovereign over every event, over everything in the world, if you know that God loves you, if you know this, then I can be thankful in everything. Doesn't mean I'm thankful for everything. But I can be thankful in everything. Whatever's going on, I believe that God's got the best. Okay? The house is blown down from a tornado. But God's got his best. You got saved. 
Okay? God's got the best. So it's, it's hard to be thankful when your house is blown down by a tornado. But was God in it? Yes. Can Romans 8.28 be applied to y'all's situation? And we know that all things work together for good. It, it's just like this. If you brought in to me a bow, and you had a bow there, and a bow there, and a bow there, and a bow there, and a bow there, he said, Preacher, I, I brought you a cake. <laughs> And you had some flour, and you had some sugar, and you had some eggs, and you had some butter, nutmeg, or whatever else you're going to put in that cake. But you had it all there, and you said, uh, Preacher, I brought you a cake. I said, now, all you got to do is just, just go ahead and eat it. Now, I'm going to tell you, if I was to take that flour, I said, okay, that's just not going to taste so good. And then I go to the sugar, that's not, and I go to egg, and I go to the butter, and I go to the spices, and whatever else is there. It's not going to be so great, is it? I'm not going to really enjoy each one of those things in their raw form of where they're at. But if you were to take those things and take them and put them all in a bowl and blend them all together, and say, preacher, I got your cake here. It's still not that good yet. I'm still not going to be that excited. But when you take that cake and you put it in a pan, and you take that cake and you put it in an oven, what do you do? You put a little heat to it. And it won't be long. There's going to be a smell in the house. I'm going to get excited. I wasn't excited when I saw the ingredients. I wasn't really excited when I saw it in the pan. I wasn't really excited when you put it in the oven. But all those things had to happen. That egg had to get broken. That butter had to get smushed. Those ingredients had to get blended together. Then they had to be put into an oven under the heat, and that heat began to melt all that stuff together. And you know what it came out as? A cake. And then all of a sudden, you got the cake, and now comes the icing, and I'm excited. <laughs> Especially if it's coconut cream. Mm -hmm. If it's a coconut cake, I'm excited. Okay? Uh, so, so the thing is, is this. I'm going to get excited about that, and the smell is going to bring me to it. Can I tell you that sometimes it's hard to get excited in... What's going on? For what's going on. But the thing is, in every circumstance, I can understand that God's involved in it. No matter what it is. Uh, I, I, I told you one of the greatest things that happened over the last 10 years, which there's been a lot, but was when God broke my ankle. I, I, I just, at that point, I said to God, okay. With everything else that's going on, I don't know how in the world you're going to make this work out for the good, but I'm going to trust you in it, and I'm excited to see what it is. And I just start giggling. On my way to the hospital, driving myself with a wet rear end from sliding and moving and scooting myself across a yard because I didn't have a phone, pulled myself up in the truck, drove myself to the hospital, and on the way, got to giggling about it and laughing about it and saying, God, I don't know why in the world you're going to turn this into good, but I'm excited to see what it is. And you know what he did? He turned it into something great. My son, a few years back, rolled his car three times, called me up, said, Now, Daddy, I'm busy to tell you something that's bad, but it's not as bad as it sounds. Okay. I just had an accident and I rode my car three times. I'm in an ambulance. 
on my way to the hospital. What hospital are you on your way to? Macomb, okay? I'm getting in the car in just a few minutes. I'll see you. That's five hours, eight, well, 500 miles away, basically, almost. Mm -hmm. So about eight hours. So first thing I do is he already said his mama knew, but I called somebody because his mom wasn't going to be able to be there, and I called a fireman that is a friend of his and somebody who I was their principal. And I called him up, and I said, hey, listen, I need to let you know something. Aaron was in an accident. He rode his car. He's headed to the hospital. Can you mean? He said, I'll be there before he gets there. And he was there. And then they take him from there and they take him up to Jackson, Mississippi, because they're going to have to fit him for a back brace. And boy, at first, everybody was like, oh, no, oh, no. Listen, God's got it. He rode it. He walked out of the car up on the hill by himself. He was in a back race. That changed Aaron's life. I saw it. I saw it happen. Aaron lost weight during that time. He got excited. He couldn't shave. He's been with a beard ever since and looks good with one. Aaron has become a different person after that accident, more mature and everything. Aaron needed that accident. Mm -hmm. It cost me because I had to buy him another car. <laughs> but he needed that accident. It made him into something. He, he had the accident. They had the ingredients of the, everything put together. And then he had to sit at home for three months and do nothing. He had to bake. But after he got done baking, he came out smelling good and looking good. And maybe one day he'll get a girlfriend who says he tastes good. But, uh, uh, but the thing is, hopefully he gets a girlfriend one of these days. And, uh, but, but God's good, isn't he? God's good. And, and so the thing is, is he, we ought to be in everything, give thanks in it. Not for it. It's hard to be thankful for everything, but we can be thankful in everything. There's a difference in it. Now, it's going to start, first of all, is rejoice evermore. That's where it's got to start. In other words, joyful in every circumstance. That's as opposed to happiness. You're not going to be happy in every circumstance, but you can be joyful in every circumstance. There's a difference in there. I, I'm not happy all the time, but I'm always joyful. I'm always joyful, but I'm not always happy. Uh, joy is a state of mind that focuses on the bigger picture and perspective that God is in charge. That's what joy is. Happiness comes from my happenings. Joy is is a state of mind that is perspective that says God is in charge, God is in control, and so therefore I can be joyful, and if I can be joyful, then in everything I can give thanks and I can have a heart of gratitude. Does that make sense? And so the thing is, that's where we have to be in our lives. If we're not there, we're in trouble. Then, here's the next thing I notice, verse number 17, pray without ceasing. Prayerful in every moment. So I'm happy in every circumstance. I'm prayerful in every moment. Pray continually. Basically, unimpeded.